Hey everyone, thanks for watching this replay. Hi Coco! <laughs> what are you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning everybody! I've got two dogs running around. Hey Brianna, I've got two dogs running around my feet. Hi. Joining me here is my weekly co-host Rico. Hey Steve. Hey Jennifer. Good morning everybody. I've got some very excited dogs at my feet. <laughs> what? What? Okay, hang on. Good morning, Diane. Let me. I'm going to show you. Settle down. Um, I want to show you real quick. Morning, Pat. Um, I've got two very excited dogs at my feet. Well, they just moved. Um, and that is because. Morning. Hey, Puff. Morning, Jeannie. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just take the camera off of here. Hey, Sharon. And show you. <laughs> what are you doing? Because, <laughs> morning, Lori. Because we're going to be talking about taking the stress out of the vet visit, they saw me pulling all of these things out and they got excited. Um, because the know, they know the training's getting ready to start. <laughs> morning, Ray. Morning, everybody. Rico's like... <laughs> the mammals. The mammals. Let me, before we get started, let me... Put this back up here. And hey, morning, Karen. There's Karen joining us this morning. She's the manager here at the Animal Behavior Center. Hang on, we're going to start training in just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah. Um, so before I, morning, Felicia. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Deb. Before I get started, for those that don't know, um, welcome to Coffee with the Critters. We go live every Sunday morning as long as I'm in town and as long as I don't have family in town. Every so Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We are an international education, international educational center teaching anybody who wants to know more about how to train your animals using positive reinforcement and applied behavior analysis. And we do all of that through our online services. So we reach people all over the world. And um, yeah, so one of our newest members uh, just joined this week from Japan. So, and, and we teach multiple species, as you see. We have parrots in here, we have some dogs in here, we've got a pig in the next room, vultures, and as soon as Coffee with the Critters is over, we have two temporary residents coming in today. Yeah, so Karen, if you can tell Sandy that, <laughs> they'll be arriving between 10.30 and 11 today. And I have not told anybody who they are, except for level two members. Um, so this is, uh, we're going on, let's see, over two and a half years of doing Coffee with the Critters every Sunday morning. Um, and at the end of next month, I may take you with me to Chicago. Hey, good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Dawn. Um, some upcoming things we have going on here. I just want to uh, mention these real quick. Next Sunday, we are having a fundraiser here. We rarely open our doors to the public. We will do it for uh, fundraising opportunities. I know when we um, started the Animal Behavior Center, we, it's a huge space, and I had conservation fundraising in mind all the way, and we've done several fundraisers. Next week, we'll be doing the Boho Beautiful Yoga with the Animals here Sunday, so if you are interested and you're local or not local, you need to contact Nature's Nursery, uh, Wildlife Education Center. Um, I volunteer for them. I volunteered for them for eight years. Morning, Peg. Morning, Kim. And the um, all I'm doing is providing the space and a few animals. So if you've never done yoga with a pig, a deaf dog, a roller pigeon, contact Nature's Nursery. Uh, that's next Sunday. And then at the end of, by the way, happy October. But at the end of October, I will be in Chicago presenting at the uh, National Bird Show. And um, also, 
that weekend. I will also be starting, um, Dr. Jason Crean has asked me to co-lecture one of his college courses um, in zoo genetics and biology. And um, I will be handling the behavior and training part. So, yes, um, if you're interested in online or, or zoo classes, um, contact Dr. Jason Crean. Um, and I'll be speaking at the end of Chicago to his zoo biology students and continuing that coursework online. Yeah, I'm just covering the behavior and the training aspect. Um, and we're going to have something really cool where I come back here to Toledo. They will have an assignment to do. They will be meeting me online and showing me proof of their work. So that's pretty cool. Um, this will be my, one of my first college courses that I've helped teach, so I thank Dr. Jason Crean for that. And then a couple of weeks, I can't remember, I think it's maybe the weekend after that, I'll be in Columbus. Um, I've been asked to uh, present two lectures and one workshop at the Ohio Wildlife Rehabilitators Association. So I'll be in Columbus for that at the beginning of November, and I'll be taking a couple animals with me. That's always a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and we have some, uh, am I forgetting something? I feel like I'm forgetting another function. Um, and then shortly after that, I'll be in Key West having fun for Christmas. Yes. And um, so let's get started. That's right. That's right. Let's go ahead and get started. We train a lot of different animals here. And I like to show people... I like to show people. Um, I like to show people how to enter. That's right, Rock. Take the stress out of the animal's environment. I prefer to work with exotics. Um, there's several people. Um, I forgot to mention one thing. I know. Peekaboo! Uh, I think Deb Jones is on here. Pay attention when we had coffee with the critters with Deb Jones. Um, I'll miss you guys too, Sharon. I'll miss you guys too. Have fun at your at your expo. Um, when Deb Jones was here, if you're on here, Deb, just say hi. Just say, good boy. You're not Deb though, but I'm gonna take that. Um, Deb Jones was on here with me a couple of weeks ago. Um, Deb is a international, there's Deb, there she is. Deb is a, a uh, professional and international dog trainer. She helps teach some of the online courses at Finzi Dog Sports. Anyways, Deb and I have a couple things up our sleeve that we're going to be offering you guys. Uh, next year as well. We'll be working on them, so hang tight. Yeah, and that reminds me of what I forgot. Two weeks from today, we will be having a workshop, a hands-on workshop right here, Saturday and Sunday, the second week in October. Um, and this is, that workshop is called our Beyond Basics, so it's beyond introduction to positive reinforcement. And I have some tricky things up my sleeve for everybody, and pretty much everybody attending that weekend are professional trainers. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a couple of surprises for you guys. Yeah, so if you're not following Deb Jones, um, Deb, feel free to put a link up um, where people can reach you as well. There's very few things that I'll do where I'll collaborate with anybody because I've worked very hard to get where I'm at and um, very hard to get the Animal Behavior Center where it's at. So there's only a few people I've collaborated with. And um, one is Pat, she's on here, Dr. Patricia Anderson. We spoke together and we have an upcoming project which we need to get in touch with with each other, Pat, um, on some things we're going to be collaborating with. But um, so I pick very wisely who I collaborate with, and I have no problem collaborating with Dr. Patricia Anderson, 
and Dr. Deb Jones and Dr. Jason Green. So let's get started and do some work on taking the stress out of the visit. So Deb just posted, people can reach me through my bio at finzydogsportsacademy.com. There you go. Hey, Mano. There's the awesome Mano who um, had Bellatrix. Remember Bellatrix? A week ago, she was in that cage. And about an hour from now, there's going to be something else in that cage. So stay tuned. Yeah, and I just glanced at your message this morning. Mano, I didn't have time to look at it, but I did read that Bellatrix is... Coming to your glove. So that made my day when I read that this morning. Okay, I have several things here sitting in front of me. She came to the glove again this morning. Yay! Um, I miss her already. So taking the stress out of the vet visit. When we start doing that, we don't train for the vet visit the day it's time to go to the vet because it's too late. Um, and we're working on some of this in the Parrot Project right now. Um, if you're not, if Karen, if you're still on here, can you throw, put up the link to the Parrot Project? Um, this is what we do in our business. We do, we go live like this and we show step, hi, step by step how to train different animals. Um, our membership program pertains to all animals but understanding applied behavior analysis and I make it very easy to put into everyday terms and then um, we have our individual projects like in the parrot project we're talking about um, crate training right now um, getting your bird to go into the crate and I've, we're gonna do that here in a minute we're gonna go into the other room um, we're also talking about feather destructive and mutilation in the parrot project and I have more coming up for you guys we also have the pig project, the deaf dog project, podcast, live streams, monthly Q and A's. We have uh, the wine and cheese. We're getting ready to start where all the members interact with each other online. We make it super easy. So one of the things we're discussing, hi, and we're getting ready to start in the memberships and the projects is getting your animal ready for the vet visit. So several of the animals here really enjoy going to the vet because we make that super, um, hello everybody, we make that super fun. And we start that training right here. Um, just like I tell people when, hi, when you're trying to train your dog to walk loose on a leash at the park. Where you do not begin is at the park. Just like with the vet visit, where you don't start is necessarily at the vet. The veterinarians and the vet techs try to make the, the uh, vet visit as stress-free as possible, but that is our responsibility as companion animal caretakers. Um, getting them ready here. That is why we do, hi. Um, that's what's so key in target training and stationing because those come into play at the vet visit. So where do you start? Right here. So I have a station, a towel, a station, a towel, a muzzle, we're gonna go in the other room and work with Cello and Milo as well. This, it's a Nyla bone, but we train the birds to accept this in their mouth, put it in their mouth, and if you turn it sideways, thanks Karen for putting up the link. Karen just put up the link for the Parrot Project, um, and Karen, if you can throw up the link for the membership program too. This is what we use for the birds to get them ready for gram stains, to accept a voluntary gram stain. Um, gram stain is a swab inside the mouth, and that's how you tell if there's um, any type of infection. Um, so I do this with Rico all the time. And I do believe I've done that neither the, I think I did it in the membership program. But let's do this in the Parrot Project too. Um, so Rico accepts this, allows me to put it in the mouth, 
and then, yep, I'll show everything on the table again, Julie. Put it in the mouth sideways, and then you open it, and when you open it, it causes the bird to open its mouth, or you could just tell the bird to open its mouth on cue. We can get the dogs here to open their mouths on cue, the pig. We're getting ready to train the pig in the pig project for tusk inspection and um, rectal temperature taking. <laughs> it doesn't start there. Um, but <laughs> stick this in the mouth. <laughs> we need to have cocktails with the critters. Yeah? Uh -huh. um, sad that I'm thinking about that at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Um, but they, I'm coming! <laughs> But we stick this in the mouth, turn it sideways, causes the bird to open its mouth, <laughs> and then you take a Q-tip and go in and swab, which could be, um, it could be an aversive, but when I walk in Rico's cage with this, he goes to his station and he gets ready for a gram stain. We all, hi. Um, so, syringe. We're getting ready to start this in the parrot project too. Get your bird or other animal to accept taking medication orally. Um, we have the Dremel. And as you can see, this is not an aversive or my birds would be flying away. Um, this is the type of Dremel we use for nail trims. Okay, of birds and dogs. And we also, train for uh, nail, nail trims. And in the other room, I don't think we'll be able to get to this today. Hi! But we show how to do voluntary nail trims with your pigs in the pig project. Um, so obviously, all of these things could be cues for your animal to either run or fly away or run and fly to you. And when I brought out the muzzle this morning, I was scurrying this morning right before Coffee with the Critter started to find out where I put the muzzle. And when I found it and pulled it off the wall, the dogs came running to me. So that tells me I have effectively paired this with the positive, a conditioned reinforcer. So, so many times, oh, we'll do some great training today too. Um, so many times these things, here's her Julie, show you. There's our station, there's our towel, a muzzle, nyla bone, syringe, Dremel, nail trimmers. So many times, let's see what the bird or dogs do if when they see me pick this up. So many times people pair this with punishers um, using force. So those are cues to the animal, uh-oh, this is getting ready to come, and they take off running. Let me show you. I'm going to pick up the muzzle, and let's see what the dogs do. <laughs> Thanks, Levi. Um, so Karen just put up a link to our membership program. There you go. Yeah, so we got a dog walking to it, like, come on, lady, would you please put the muzzle on? <laughs> we even train this with the pig and we can go into the other room and do some of that. Adrian says, do you use a mat for a station for the birds to or a portable perch? We'll just use, um, what I use for the birds is just my hand. I train them to station on my hand. Um, <clears throat> and Rico, um, what do you think, Pipsqueak? What? What we do with the birds is we train them to accept restraint. Um, you can see here, usually if you pull out a towel in front of the bird, they go flying the other way. Rico usually comes walking to this and um, we have to use this for protection with him. So we do cover him so we don't break a wing and we restrain him while we do nail trims. And Sandy helps me do the nail trims right here inside his cage. Um, and we'll start working on all of this inside the parrot project as well. Let me go ahead and show some training, okay? I gotta watch my time because I wanna get into the other room and show some crate training and some training with the pig as well. 
But what I do, let's see, I only brought in one station, so we're gonna have two dogs fighting for it. Let's get some dogs on a station. Sorry, I need to find a new clip for my camera. Let's get some dogs on a station and I'll show you when we can use them. I have not done the muzzle training in quite a while. See, they're like, oh, we're getting ready to get started. Let me get my camera situated. Sorry, guys. Okay, so when I bring out the station, that's going to be a cue. So they're all following me like, yes, it's getting ready to start, yes. So you can take this station to the vet. <laughs> take it. <laughs> so, so many times your animals are just looking for information and we forget to give it to them, okay? They're sitting there looking for information. Give it to them. Tell them what to do. Because if you don't, if you don't um, show them what to do, they're going to start doing behaviors um, that you may not want. So a station with the birds at the vet is just on my, on my fist. Just stay right there. And then we, the veterinarian will come up and, um, or the vet tech, put the towel around the bird. And we can flip the bird over and start doing whatever we want. Remind me to tell you what Rico's reinforcer, positive reinforcer is for going at the vet. So did you guys see the photos that I put up um, this morning with the um, post on Coffee with the Critters? Those were all photos from being at the vet's office. Did you see Rocky on his scale? Rocky loves going to the vet. So we don't train him to have his nails trimmed here because he loves going to the vet so much that we just take him into the vet and they towel him and it's a fun experience for him. And one of his reinforcers is in that photo that I posted on Coffee with Critters. And it's the vet tech, Carol. Julie Shipman also comes here, um, a vet tech. And Dr. Riker, Dr. Riker is our vet for most of the animals here. Okay, now when you get your animals on a station, see how they're constantly looking for information. When you get your animals on a station, it tells them where to go. And we do take these stations to the vet when these guys go outside of here to a vet. And we put that on a table. And when we put that on a table, and you'll see that in that photo, I believe, of Milo. When you put that on a table, it tells the animal where to go. Okay? And Dawn Kagan, this. She told me all animals or all dogs should be trained to accept a muzzle. So this is restraint. Train them to accept restraint. Good. I haven't trained this in a while, so let's see what Levi does. <laughs> you ever your dogs fight to be muzzled? She thinks she has to lick the top of it. Or maybe she's trying to tell me she's not comfortable with it. Nice. Yeah. Good. So, and there's numerous different ways you could approach this. Some people put uh, like peanut butter on the inside. What I can do, where is Snow? She's out in the center. I should bring her in here. What I could do is I'm having a problem. She's putting her, her mouth right here and licking it. So uh, by my lack in timing, my poor bridging, um, I've trained her something I didn't want her to do. So if I train her, this is the importance in target training. Touch, good. I just slipped a piece of dog food in there. Go hey man, you ripped us off. If I train her this, then I can use that as a prop. Nice. I can use that as a prop. A prop is a temporary tool. So I can tell, good. Sorry, you're not done. Nice. 
So see Levi is now, I'm creating duration with Levi. Nice. I don't know why I keep giving you a thumbs up and getting a little scoop off your stations. Nice. I'm saying nice for you guys. <laughs> so you guys can tell where my bridge is. Good. So I'm moving a little too fast for Quincy. And I'm starting to get behaviors that <laughs> starting to get behaviors that don't want. Next. So I'm creating duration. Levi now. Okay, let's take a break. And you're like, no, no, we don't went to train. Stop. So, and this is also why I don't. This is me personally. I don't give an obvious end of training signal. Those of you that are in the projects and the memberships know that. I don't give an end of training signal um, because, and this is me and just me personally, because studies show that if we actually are using positive reinforcement training. It is the animal's preferred form of enrichment. I train a lot of exotic animals. Um, so let me give you an example in particular. Um, with um, a pigtailed macaque, a monkey, a, a primate that I used to train, and you may see more of. I'll answer your questions in just a second. Um, Studies show that if you're actually using positive reinforcement training, it's the animal's preferred form of enrichment. So if it's their preferred form of enrichment, and then you're telling them, okay, I'm done, and walking away, some of the animals I train, that could actually reinforce aggression. I'm going to reinforce with the left hand with Rico so I don't cross-contaminate. Um, okay, so at end of training signal, could be a stressor to several animals. So instead, what I do is redirect attention high at the end of a training session. So it's important to keep your training sessions short. That was kind of a long one. I'm gonna go back and start training again. Um, Kim, don't jinx it. Kim says Coco and Rocky are being so quiet. What about Suki? On her mouth. Yeah. Um, so do you see, and this is what we've covered, um, we have a whole podcast on conditioned reinforcers within the membership program. Um, a conditioned reinforcer is something that's paired, it's a neutral stimulus paired with um, a primary reinforcer. And you heard Deb Jones and I talking about that. We've got dogs here asking for the training to start again. Um, thanks, Karen, for putting that up there again. So you can see these could all be cues to run away or cues to run to. This is what, because there's the amount of animals we have here. Hi. Because the amount of animals we have here, most of my training is um, preparing for uh, grooming, uh, going to a groomer, or whether we groom here, or getting um, them ready for the vet, getting them in a crate. So with the two animals that are coming in an hour, oh, I have no idea where I'm going to begin because I don't know exactly what they can do. and. Um, their history and training. Hi. Hi. And you've always heard me say, if that animal can see, hear, or smell you, you are training them whether you realize it or not. So that is why, like, um, people who want to volunteer here, they're like, we'll just clean cages, we'll clean up poop. And I'm like, no, that's where the trainers go. Because inside these cages, or inside this room, or out there, um, if that animal can see or hear you, you're training it. Um, 
and we put a lot of work into and work that's another topic I'm going to have for a lecture work is not a four letter word okay. so I should actually be training Rico something instead of just being cute reinforcing for being cute so let's see maybe we do this with Rico I don't want to do too much of it because I do not have um, one of his reinforcers here that I usually pair this with all the time. probably not going to do this one either because I need to get in his cage to do that and I need um, I need to get in his cage to do that and I need 110% of my attention because if I make a wrong move he is probably going to I'm gonna punish what I'm actually trying to train which is poisoning the queue um, and I want to go back and see what you guys were saying during the training. How do I redirect? Um, it depends. I'll ask another behavior and d deliver a more lengthy uh, positive reinforcer. And usually, like I just did, as I threw treats on the ground um, to redirect their attention away from me. What treats am I using with the dogs? I can tell you what I'm using, but um, Mano, I use whatever they want whatever they like and um, I do use dog treats soft dog treats that I can easily break in half and I get them in two different sizes I accidentally bought the wrong size one time and um, it ended up working out in my benefit so these are the two sizes that I use this is the large and this is the small and I like working with both of them but I'm preferring the smaller ones because did you guys see what I was doing with my hands with both of them after I bridged I would break this in half and deliver that's a tiny piece of a reinforcer and with your reinforcers you want them to be if we're talking about food reinforcers you want them to be pretty small because you can get a lot of repetition out of them and I'll, let me show you again with Rico um, see Amanda's in here yay Amanda is another volunteer who is coming in today um, yeah go ahead Deb I'm okay with you posting whatever you want to post um, how do you train duration do you have a podcast do I have a podcast on duration I'm trying to think let's do one let me write that down so in our memberships in our membership program, um, I pick a topic, and believe me, I will never run out of topics. I will never run out of topics. I can't, because um, behavior is always happening. Duration. What I do in the membership program is I pick out a topic, and I do a one-hour podcast, and I talk about it in detail, in length. And then what I do is come out and um, throughout the months, I'll do live streams. And like our memberships, you can join at any time. And then once you join, there's a huge library and a lot of podcasts to start listening to. And what I do is, I mean, the Parrot Project is cruising. We are cruising and working as a whole. Um, yes, you guys get a sneak peek. Um, and then I come out here and do live streams and it's just like this so people attend the live streams and they start asking questions and I'll come back to the camera and look and say Stephanie asked a question I'll be like okay Stephanie let me show you and I'll grab the camera and I'll go to whatever animal and the nice thing about the live streams is not necessarily attending live it's you're watching it's there for you to watch in the replay and continue to interact and you're watching it unedited so when I'm making mistakes I point them out and I show how to recover from them 
Um, let's do some more training. They're patiently waiting. I definitely want to make sure I get into the other room. So a lot of times in the parrot project, people say, where do I start with the nail trims? Um, you start where the animal is calm and then you reinforce calm while you're slowly shaping, um, shaping the behavior. So a lot of times, all you have to do is bring out this or bring out this. And from a distance, um, you'll see the animal run or fly away. So that's because these two have meanings and have a history. And I can often tell, like when these two animals get ready to come in, like I say, one of the first things I do is observe. So I need to observe and I can tell a lot about how the animals ha handled by just observation. Um, like these two getting ready to come in, I will ask what's their history and what do you want them trained to do? Um, and they're both education animals. So they're gonna be ambassadors for their species, meaning they're gonna be going out on programs. Um, trying to think I do want to show you guys some training in the other room before we run out of time. If there's topics, hey Nicole, if there's topics you guys want to see addressed in Coffee with the Critters, let me know um, and I can do some of those. Just message me. Um, and if there's topics for those of you in the membership and the projects, let me know and let's get started. So we're going to, in all the memberships and the projects, we're gonna get started on some medical training. Let me do one more thing in here with the dogs and then we'll move with Cello and Milo. Because I wanna Cello our roller pigeon and Milo the pig. Let me show you how a station helps with a nail trim. And you guys always hear me say, One of the first things I train any animal is a target. You guys are all target training, whether you realize it or not. Okay? And a station is a target. A target is having, a, having an animal touch an object with a particular body part. Okay? So this is a target. Good. So the cue is just seeing it. Why don't we turn around so they can see your faces? Come here. That a little bit better? <laughs> so we do a lot of tra target training for vet prep. Okay. talking about this in the membership yesterday. So much <laughs> behavior is contextual. What may work here may not work somewhere else. So that's why I say build your list of reinforcers. A couple of key points I can say is build your list of reinforcers and keep your animal used to change. And this is why we do foot targeting. Let me find something the animals can target their feet. Let's just, they've never done this. I, this is a tub of bird food. Let's see if I can train this. So they're just looking, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Okay, so I'm gonna let them sit. Probably get nice. <laughs> Levi. Levi's our deaf dog. Nice. Good. I'm using so many different bridges. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Duration. Good. Did you put that? Okay. So she's, she's 
like, what do you want me to do? She's looking for information. Can you put your foot down here? Okay. <laughs> Good. Because, nice. Watch, this helps with this. Okay, we're gonna get two dogs fighting for a station again. you take the stress out of the vet visit. Okay? Nice job. I do want to do some work in the other room. There's Coco mimicking the peacocks from the zoo. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and move into the other room um, and start some work with Cello and Milo. And I'm gonna tell you guys, if you wanna really fine tune your training skills, train prey animals, train um, volunteer at a wildlife rehabilitation center, when I really fine tune my skills is when I was training wildlife that could not be released. And um, wildlife does not want to see me because if you see me, it means you're not being released. So um, I wanna say when you're training a wild animal that has been a history, has a history of staying as far away from possible from humans as possible now the reason i train at uh for wildlife when uh, the owl was here is because these animals in order to keep them they have to be used for education you have to take them out and educate the public and you have to have a license to do all that so um, i volunteer at nature's nursery and when i was taking my master's classes in applied behavior analysis, I would study certain chapters and I would head out there and start practicing. Start practicing uh, conditioned reinforcers, intermittent schedules of reinforcement, um, aver aversives, positive punishment. Um, and I was using it on raptors. Um, what else did it, um, I started a little bit with a coyote, but I had to stop. Um, whatever, all kinds of their skunks, uh, their possums, uh, the different animals they had there. So, and the reason I got into this is because I wanted to take the stress out of the animal's environment. Um, and when you take those animals on programs, you can tell if you understand body language, this animal is stressed. So, peekaboo, let's head into the other room. And here's where I grab different treat pouches. So don't forget, if you guys want to find out more information about what we do, head to the animalbehaviorcenter.com. This is what we do in our memberships, in our projects. Uh, let's see. We're doing pigeon and pig. And they're both in this treat pouch. Peekaboo! So cello works for pine nuts and Milo works for Cheerios. Okay. So 
want to show you a little crate training and um, maybe some preparation for so with a pig there's snow with a pig how you can tell a pig is sick go ahead Quince so Levi has to stop and wait for the thumbs up Good. to walk through the door I'll be right back with the pig here's your lovely snow with the pig the first way you can tell they are sick is um, their temperature so that's why it's key to train for a voluntary rectal temperature taking bear with me I put a gate up and I got to get through it snow believe me you do not want to come in here snow does not want to come in here because it's not easy living with a deaf and blind dog. For those that don't know, Snow is our deaf and blind dog. And Chilla was getting ready to fly on the camera. Um, because the other animals don't understand why she cannot read their body language. That causes a lot of problems, guys. A lot. Um, so, and Milo does not understand why snow cannot read her body like his body language so if she can't read it he will charge and attack her and that is why we train milo we train him both for accidents because you never know when one is going to happen um we are tr we've trained milo when you see snow because snow can't see you snow soon finds out that he's there because she'll smell him but when you are in the same area with snow Milo, wherever snow is, run away from her. That's what we train Milo to do. Okay, so let's do some work here because these guys are ready to rock and roll and Cello has a history of flying on top of the camera, so bear with me. Um, let's do some crate training. We're talking about this, how to crate train birds in the Parrot Project right now. You just, just because this is a bird, the same approaches I take with any animal. So we do crate train our dogs, pig, bird, um, everything. Because you never know when you'll need it. So many people thinking crate training is cruel. It is not if you're doing it correctly. So we were just discussing this in the Parrot Project. These are crates I like to work with with birds because they open from the top and they open from the side. And right on cue, you can tell this is a positive experience for the bird because he is not flying away from the crate. Uh -huh. So we also train this in the membership. I need to get him off my head. Good. So if I were to tip my head, that would be negative reinforcement. Come up here. He's looking at that camera, which I do not want him flying. Good. Milo, I'll feed you in a minute. Milo's like, me, me, me. Come over here. Okay, this obviously needs some work. I haven't trained this in a while. This is why I like the two-door crates. Now he's showing signs of being nervous of not being able to see Milo. So I don't, if he's not comfortable, good. I don't want to continue this training. I want to back up. And I could get Milo, good. Get Milo out of here. Good. So I'm not going to press the issue. And when you're crate training, this is what we're talking about. Good. In the parrot project, don't shut that door. The animal always has 
control over that door during training. Good. And pretty soon, like you've seen the photos. Okay, up. Good. We are able to get these doors shut. When you're not crate training, shut the doors. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so he's like, why wouldn't he, good, want to continue to go in there? Because it has a history of bringing positive reinforcers and high rates of positive reinforcement. Good. Okay, need to shut that door. <laughs> so he's like, no, I don't want to stop. <laughs> if I don't, we're in the beginning stages of shaping this, so that's a capture. I didn't ask for it, but I got it. And we have a whole podcast on capturing. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, he's like, maybe I like this crate a lot. So, oh, good. Okay, now we're getting some different behaviors. So I definitely want that door shut. So in our workshop in a couple of weeks, you guys are going to be doing that training, not me, uh -huh. along with some other things. Um, okay, so with Milo, let's train something. Um, can't remember who I trained a head target the other day. But this is what I do for Milo for the vet visit. His station goes on top. Here, let's, let's move that. His station goes on top of the table because it tells him where to go. And in our workshop in a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing, you guys are going to be doing this. So a station is a target with duration. Hey, Chillo, you want to come to me? Because I really want you not on my camera. Thanks. Why don't you come on my head? Can you sit up here? Good. Good, my little. How's that for a screenshot? Good. So... I don't want Cello on the camera, so I reinforce, I tell him where to go. Good, Milo. Good, Cello. Where's your face? Oh, not over there. So, oops. Good, Milo. Okay. Head target. Good. Why do I train a pig a head target? Milo, come. Over here. Why do I train a pig a head target? Good. Because, so the veterinarian can do good. His inspect, his examination. So if I'm doing this, good. It's telling Milo what to do while the vet is back here taking temperature, good. Giving shots, trimming hooves, good. So this is training duration. Even though we do his hills here, because with pigs, a lot of times it's major force, um, major force being used or having to be put under to trim the hooves, which putting under can be very dangerous. So I said, I can train this. Let's train this instead. 
Um, anyways, you guys, I'm gonna have to run because the animals are on their way. Stay tuned. I may do another live stream once they're here, um, but I'm definitely gonna show the members some things. Um, and these two animals coming in, one I have very little history in working with. There's gonna be another one coming in this week that I have no history. I've never interacted with this type of animal before. And we're going live with that within the membership level two um, specifically. We'll start a new project. Level two members get free pro a free project and it's whatever animal is coming in at the time. Thanks, Jeannie. So, was it, did you like this? Sometimes I think you guys get bored with me and being redundant. So, um, anyways, yeah. So if you're interested in this kind of training, join us at the Animal Behavior Center .com, um, for our membership program or sign up for our projects or most of our members sign up for both. Anyways, have a great day, everybody, and stay tuned. And here goes Cello on my camera. Not. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much.